Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name again is Mark and uh, for those who are new to my channel, don't forget to click down there for you to subscribe for you to be able to be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. So for today's video, um, we will be talking about the Euclid's uh, five postulates. Okay, so I consider these uh, five uh, postulates in the sense that uh, these are the basic of the plane geometry and these are one of the major tools in the, um, the rise of Euclidean geometry. So although there are a lot more uh, for the postulates uh, from Euclid's, but let me just um, consider these five uh, famous uh, postulates from the famous mathematicians Euclid of um, Egypt. So, of course, Euclidean geometry is a study of geometry that satisfied all Euclid's um, axioms, including the parallel postulates. So, there are a lot more postulates uh, from Euclid's, but I consider these five um, only. So, these are postulates are actually presents from um, Euclid's element. This is actually the book. It's, um, this is a mathematical treatise um, consisting of 13 books, yes, attributed to the ancient mathematicians Euclid of uh, Alexandria, Egypt. So it's actually a collection of definitions, postulates, uh, theorems, propositions, and the constructions, and of course the mathematical proofs. Uh, for the propositions. So, of course, we're talking about math, so we're talking about proofs of those claims. Okay, so what are the five um, you, uh, Euclid's postulates? So, first is we have this. Number one, um, a straight line can be drawn joining any two points. So, example, um, what does this um, statement says all about? Um, example, if you have two points here, so you have points A and B, these can be uh, connected by a straight line, assuming I have a perfect drawing there. So that's actually a straight line connecting those two points. So that's the statement about uh, the first uh, postulate of Euclid. Okay, so number two, any straight line segment can be extended indefinitely in a straight line. So. Um, what does it mean? So let's say, for example, um, same with um, given by the first postulate. So you have a line segment, um, assuming I have a perfect drawing, I'm sorry. Um, I have uh, two points here, A and B. So this uh, straight line segment can be extended indefinitely to a straight line. And that's it. Okay, number three. Given at a straight line segment, a circle can be drawn having the same segment as radius and, and in endpoints as centers. So what does it mean? So if you have a point here, another point here, so let's say this is um, actually a line segment. So this one will, the one of the endpoints of this uh, segment is considered as a center and this, um, and by this, um, this aligned segment is our radius here. So by another um, connect uh, by another line segment here, okay, you can um, create a radio uh, a circle. So assuming I have a perfect drawing, my bad. That's it. Okay, number four postulate. All all right angles are congruent. That means all right angles are equal. So if you have um, regardless of how they look like like i mean how they appear in a in a sheet of paper whether it looks to you like a bigger angle or a smaller angle or a bigger figure um regardless this one here supposing this is a right angle i have a perfect drawing here uh this one so it looks to you like a bigger figure they're all equal they're all 90 degrees so that's the statement of um the fourth postulate and that's it Okay, so number five postulate. It says here that if a transversal fall into lines in such a way that the sum of the interior angles on one side of the transversal are less than two right angles, 
then the lines meet in that side on which the angles are less than two right angles. Okay, how does it look like? So, let's say this is a transversal um, line here, and these are two lines. So, this is L1 and um, L2. So, I'll consider this as L3. So, if it says here that the sum of the interior angles on one side of the transversal, so this side here, the sum here is, of course, um, this is less than we're pretty sure this is less than 90 degrees so this is nine, uh, less than the right angle another one here is less than 90 degrees so you're pretty sure that um, let's say this is n here and this is m here you're pretty sure that n plus m is less than 180 degrees so since this is less than 180 degrees then this side the line, um, the part of the line at this side actually meets with a with second line when you extend that to forever on that side. Although it, it sounds that there's no forever. I'm kidding. So they actually meet on that side. That's the statement of the fifth postulate. Okay, so um, in this video, uh, we will be proving the fifth postulate here but before we have to prove on that fifth, fifth postulate we're going to discuss first um this uh play first action actually this play first action is that um this is somewhat equivalent or I, yeah this is actually equivalent to the parallel postulate so what is a play first action it says here that uh, given a line and a point not on the line, there is exactly one line on that point that does not intersect the given line. Okay, so now that is actually the play first action. We can use that in order for us to approve for the fifth postulate. So how do we prove with the fifth postulate? Okay, so um, given that you have a figure here, um, let's say this is um, the first line L1 and the second line L2. And um, this is the third line. So the L3 is obviously the transversal line of two lines L1 and L2. So, um, so I'm not going to write how it is written by proof. I'm just going to discuss how it is being done. So that means I am giving you the outline on how to prove this fifth postulate. So if you notice, um, um, so suppose that you have these two lines L1 and L2, and suppose you have a point of intersection here. Um, let's say this is the point intersection P1 and this is P2 here. Okay, so obviously um, this P1 is not on line L2 and this uh, P2 is not on line L L1. Um, but P1 is the intersection of line L1 and L3 and uh, P2 is the intersection of line L2 and L3. And also assume that you have uh, points here on L1. Let's say um, you have um, Q1 here. Uh, you also have uh, Q1 prime here. And um, you have Q2 here, so that is located in line L2. And um, you have uh, Q2 prime here. Okay. So basically, the Q1 and the Q1 prime is on the on the line L1, and Q2 and Q2 prime is on the line L2. So of course, um, suppose further. Although um, it's pretty obvious on the uh, figure, but since uh, a figure is actually part of our proof here, uh, an illustration of our proof. So suppose further that the sum of uh, the angle measured uh, Q1, Q1, P2, so this one here, uh, I'm gonna shade this by red. So um, this angle here, uh, Q1, uh, P1, P2, this angle, the sum of these, and the sum of um, this one here, Q2, P2, P1, the sum of these two here is less than 180 degrees. So this simply tells us that this angle, 
I'm gonna color this by blue. So this angle here, Q1 prime, P1, P2 is greater than, so this is greater than this. So now, um, we will construct a, a line L4 here, so the fourth line. So I'm gonna construct, assuming that this line here is parallel to L2. So this is L4, assuming I have a perfect drawing of line here, L4. So I'm gonna write points here that is on L4. Let's say this is um, R1 here, and this is R2 here. Or let's say R prime, R here and R prime here. Okay. So, what does it mean? Um, the angle P2, P1, R is congruent. So, P2, P2, P1, R is actually congruent to Q2, P2, P1. So, this, um, this angle here is congruent to this angle here. This implies that the line P1, R cannot be the line L1. So the, you, you re remember this is the line L1. So this pretty sure that this line cannot be this line. So we can use the play first axiom. So by play first axiom, P1, R, okay, so the line P1, R here is the unique parallel to L2. So that means um, uh, there is no other u line that is parallel to L2 in this case. Okay. So this is the unique parallel to L2 passing through the point P1. So that means you cannot construct any other line except P1 and R that passes through P1. And that is parallel to L2 at the same time. So suppose that L1 intersects with L2 on the side of L3 that does not contain Q prime. So meaning to say that um, the intersection happens on the right side of L3. So what does it imply? The angle P2, P1, Q1. So that means uh, P2, P1, Q1. So this angle here would be an ex your angle of a triangle which contains an angle which is supplement to the angle Q2, P2, P1. Now, if this is the exterior of the supplement of the angle here, this would result to a contradiction. Why? Because if you notice, this is not the exterior of the supplement of this angle here. So, therefore, the intersection does not happen on the right side, but on the left side. And that's it. So that's actually the, the um, outline of the proof of uh, fifth postulate. So if you have questions or clarifications, you can comment down there on this video uh, for you, me to be able to know if you have anything to ask, anything to say, or anything to add. So that's all for now in this uh, video. So for the five uh, postulates of Euclid, just to make sure uh, that you might not forget, number one, uh, number one uh, postulate it says here that you can draw a straight line connecting two points. So that's the first postulate. Number two postulate is that if you have already a line segment connecting two points, you can extend that to a line extending forever. All the it sounds that there's no forever <laughs> kidding so yeah you can extend that to a line and number three is that you can construct a circle given that you have line segment so one of the endpoints of the line segment is actually the center of the circle in number four it says here that all right angles regardless you might see this as a large figure a small figure then um, that's actually they're actually the same they're actually congruent Number five is um, if you have a transversal, um, so this is actually the fifth postulate that we have proven today. So if you have a transversal line passing through two lines uh, in which um, those two lines are not parallel, so they actually intersect on the side of the transversal at which, um, at which the, the angles the interior angles created by the transversal is actually less than 180 degrees. I mean, the sum of those interior angles are less than 180 degrees. And that's all. 
So thank you so much for watching for today's video. So um, for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe down there. Click on the subscribe button for you to be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And if you have requests on a specific topic you would like me to discuss, just comment down there so that I would know and I'll be more than willing to help you with that. That's all. Thanks for watching and have a great day.